What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over actually using the things that we set in our settings menu in the game. So I demonstrated a little bit of this by uh, allowing us to set the round time in the game mode and having that show up in the game and affect our versus mode. But I want to go over setting the rest of the settings in our game mode, as well as updating the HUD for a few things as well. So for example, when we increase the number of rounds to be like one, two, three, four, five, the number of circles on the HUD should reflect that. So this is basically going to get us in a spot where our basic settings menu is set up. We have a, a functional settings menu where we can select things and change them. We still have a lot more to go over, but I'd like to get into some other things first. That way we don't go through the entire settings menu as like this 20 episode thing. We're going to cover some of our other topics, but I wanted to get this into a, a state where you can actually use it and start playing around with it. It's pretty fun and pretty cool to be able to change these things and actually see them change in the game. So I figured let's wrap that up and then we'll get into some of our combat flow and come back to this as things are needed. So when we get more into controller inputs and things, we're going to need to have settings for them. So we'll cover a lot more settings in the future. We'll also cover tabs with our settings. So for example, see how music and sound effects are here. Often audio will be its own tab, visual, gameplay. And so we'll have tabs that we can switch between and set these things. Again, this is just the basic settings menu, so I gave some examples. We still also need to be able to control these things with controllers and the keyboard, not just mouse. So there's plenty that we will be doing. Don't worry, I plan on covering all of that. With that said, we can go ahead and get started. But before we do, if you want to get caught up in the series, we're on episode 132 of the fighting game tutorial series. So we've done many episodes. We still have many, many to go. But if you want to see everything we've done and get caught up, I'll link the playlist right here in the top right corner. This is an iCard. You can click on it, check out the playlist, check out all the videos in it. Alternatively, if you're just interested in the settings episodes, then I can link you to part one of the settings in this fighting game tutorial series right here. Okay. So with that, we can go ahead and get started. Let's go to our default game mode BP and let's fix up some things that we don't need and change over everything to work with the default game mode BP based on our settings. So before we had only set the round time, let's give a quick reminder on how we did that. We have this level streamed in event that gets called when the level is loaded and we are ready to actually spawn our players and things like that. This actually occurs after the stage intro by design. That way the stage intro does not show the characters in the little sequence there. At the end of the logic, we had this. We, we set this up in previous episodes. So what this did is it basically takes the round time that was set in the game instance, the settings menu, and sets it to the game modes round time. It's important because the game modes round time is the one that we're currently using, and that's what's going to be subtracted and displayed on the HUD. But the game instance is like the setting. So this is like the, the settings round time, whereas this is the actual round time. And that's how we made that work. And that's all well, well and good. But we need to do that with our other options as well. And the other options have a few more things that we need to set. It's not just a number. So the number of rounds has the HUD component of the actual round circles. And we have also the infinite timer, which has to stop our logic for taking away time on the round if our timer is infinite. So again, this is what we had. I'm adding two other things at the end of this uh, event. So let's go ahead and start with that since it's super simple and you already have an example of it in your project if you follow the other episodes. So game instance reference has the round time and it has num rounds as well. So we can get the num rounds from the game instance and we can set it to the num rounds of the game mode. So whatever we pick on the options screen will then be put into the game mode here. So instead of having two rounds by default, maybe three, four, five, whatever. Now, we have this is round time infinite Boolean for the game instance. And what that is, is when we select the infinite option here in the round time for versus, 
round time should not go down. We can select it, but actually we didn't have a way to do that within the game mode. We only have the game instance setting for it. So you'll have this Boolean is round time infinite. But if you just try and find it in the game mode, you wouldn't come up with anything because we haven't set that up. So we're going to add that variable now to the game mode. So if you go into the code and go to your fighter template game mode.h, I've added an additional Boolean called is round time infinite. Okay. And I actually copied this over from game instance, so I have a typo there. Let me fix that. So here are the game mode settings. And so basically this is just going to track for this specific game mode, this match we're in, this level, whatever. Is this round time infinite true? Now, by default, I want it to be false. So I go into the fighter template game mode CPP. In the constructor, I set it to be false. And so even when it's read in, if it were to be read in, then it would be false on the settings menu. However, when we are going to enable this, when we click it in the menu here, what this actually does is it sets the time to 99 seconds and then sets that Boolean to true. Just a quick reminder, you can actually see this happening if we go to our settings screen and go to our a set versus round time. We have a Boolean is infinite and we have the time. So if infinite ends up being true, it's going to set this Boolean to true. Otherwise it'll be false and it'll set the round time to 99 seconds. Once this Boolean is set on the settings screen, that's why we're using it in the game mode here, because we can then just set the game modes version and make the round time not go down anymore by setting this Boolean to true. Okay, so long story short, the end of level stream in and your default game mode BP, you wanna set all the available options on the game mode that are reliant on the settings. So that is specifically for us, the round time number of rounds and round time infinite. There are plenty of other settings you could use and you may already have set up, so you can feel free to add on to this chain here. You might wanna make a separate function that captures all those updates. For now, I only have these three, so it's really not a big deal, but there will probably be quite a bit more as well. Okay, and so this is going to make it so we can actually set all the game mode values, but we've hard-coded some values. We have hard-coded some of the items on our widget, we have manually decreased time on tick. So we have to go through and make sure all these things are working as intended based on these new values and not some hard coded values or some old logic. First things first, if we scroll all the way back, we have this reset match values. So when we do a rematch, I actually call this event as opposed to streaming the level again. You could obviously do that and we've talked about that. But if you're using this event like I am where you're just resetting all the variables, we actually were resetting the round time at the end of the event before we went back to the level streamed in logic. We don't wanna do this anymore. Well, technically resetting it is perfectly fine, but we don't wanna just reset it back to 99 seconds. So we're already doing this at the end of this event here. There's no reason to do it again. And we definitely don't wanna do it to that hard coded value. So I'm actually just going to get rid of it and then still bring this into this next event. Just like that, okay? So just clean up that one node that we don't need, make things a little bit nicer. Small note, but I think it's worth mentioning. Now, other things that could be useful. So, one thing that I wanna do is I want our number of rounds and the round circles generated on the HUD. See how I now have five? In previous episodes, we had three here. I want these, these circles to only show up if that number of rounds is the selected number of rounds. So for example, if we have five rounds that we have to win before the match is won, I wanna display five circles. But if we only need two rounds to win, I only want to display two circles. And so I want that to be dependent on the number of rounds set up in the game mode. To do this, we should actually spawn the game mode HUD after we set these variables for the game mode. 
okay? So if we go to the level streamed in event and scroll over, at one point in our logic, we get the player controller, create the HUD, add it to the viewport, and then set the visibility to hidden until we set the HUD references. We then end up making it visible and doing some other stuff with it later. But the fact of the matter is we have this section here, all these highlighted nodes that are done in the, kind of the middle of this level streamed in event. I'm actually going to cut that out and I'm going to paste it over at the end of our logic, specifically after we set these other variables, okay? So we're still doing all that. I just am moving it to the end because if it's moved and, and performed at the end, then it'll have access, the game mode will have access to all the variables that we need, such as the number of rounds, the round time, and if the round time is infinite or not. By doing this, we can then, as soon as the HUD is created, use these variables to display the accurate data on the screen. Okay. So I'm just going to move the HUD logic over here to clean this up for you so there's not this huge gap. But that is an important change because now we can just do this logic on begin play instead of sending out a separate event. Or rather, um, on the game mode HUD's event construct, not begin play. On their construct as opposed to sending out a different event to say that the HUD is ready. And this has no actual change in behavior. So for example, if I select four as the number of rounds and I load my stage, I'll skip my intros this time. You can see that there's four icons up here for each round we have to win, but there's no other negative effects. So nothing, it, there was no lag, no delay in displaying the HUD. It's just important that we do that so we have things in the right order. All right. Now that's everything fixed that we need with the level streamed in event. That one's a little tricky because it's getting long. We should probably break that up into functions soon so it's a little bit easier to understand. But hopefully you're able to follow along and don't run into many issues. Next thing we want to do is make sure that if neither of the players are knocked out because, say, the time, the time ran out for the round, we want to reset the timer. And that's good. That's true. We want to do that. But we also want to make sure that it resets to the proper value, not the hard-coded 99 or whatever value that you set it to. So for example, if I set it to be 30 seconds, and then I go in here, and I play my game, I will skip the intros. Okay, we've got 30 seconds. Now, we don't have draw logic set up right now, so we can't tie, but we can win due to a timeout. So if I were to de uh, deal a little bit of damage to my opponent, and then I wait these 30 seconds. When the time runs out, it's going to defeat player two. And that is actually intended behavior. When the time runs out, the character with less health loses the round. However, the timer for the round is going to reset and it's gonna to reset to a hard coded value right now. It's actually going to reset to 99 seconds. You can see right there. Okay. So what we don't want is that. We also want the timer to actually stop at that point, which we can go ahead and fix up now. So in our time over function, which we call from our BP tick, we'll get into this in a second because this is also changed, but we have a time over function. Basically, we determine who has more health and then we call, we make sure that if they do have more health, if one has more health than the other, we call win around on that player and then reset the round time to 99. But actually this isn't really correct. We don't want to set it back to 99. Instead, we want to grab the round time from the game instance reference, if it's valid, and set it back to that. On top of it, we actually want to stop the timer from being active because at this point it's not active anymore. Okay, and we want to do that no matter what, if time's over, whether a player won or not, if it's a draw. So I'm actually going to do this right at the very start of this function. Uh, let's do it probably like there. We're going to set is uh, timer active. And we're going to set it to false at this point. The timer should not be active if time has run out. Let's clean this up. And so this will stop the timer from going if the timer runs out. And then if a player is one, meaning they haven't this, they don't have the same health, we want to set round time to this instead. Okay. So let's move this over. Bring this in. 
And it's just how we did it in the level streamed in event, basically. We don't want to just hard code it. Instead, we're setting it to this value. So it'll reset to 30 in this case. And the same goes for here, for player two wins. Okay, because yet again, we don't want to set it to the hard coded 99, but rather what is set up in the settings menu. All right, now with that adjustment, let's go ahead and play this again and make sure everything is working as intended. So let's go into our settings. Let's select 30 seconds. Three rounds is fine. Go into our verses. We can play on whatever stage. I will skip our intros. You can see we got 30 seconds. You hit our opponent. And we're going to sit here and wait. And hopefully what will happen is player two will be defeated. The timer will stop. And then it will reset to 30 seconds, not 99 seconds. That's if we've done everything correctly. The alternative is also true if player two is to defeat player one, the same thing should happen. But we're not going to test both on the video. I will verify that it works for both, though, before putting out this episode. So there you go. You can see that this works. It stays at 30 seconds, and then it depletes after. So that worked like a charm. And now we're good to go. Okay. So that fixes up the timer being reset. And in fact, that fixes up all of our round time uh, references in the game mode. So there should be no other issues with round time defaulting back to 99 seconds or playing when it shouldn't be. So with that done, we are free to continue on to the num round section. So we'll come back to the is round time infinite. Later, there's a few other things we have to do with that, but let's go to num rounds next. So remember, we set this as well. So this should be, this should work based off of what setting for number of rounds was selected in the settings menu or the default value. And what it's going to do is determine how many of these buttons, these round circles are going to pop up on the HUD and are going to be visible. That way, when we win rounds, they fill out. Okay, so first thing we need to do is go to the base game mode HUD or whatever you call this HUD, the HUD that's going to be on the screen when you're fighting. And we had three circles here on each side. And they were called P1 round counter 1, 2, and 3 and P2 round counter 1, 2, and 3. I'm not going to go over all their logic because we have entire episodes on these guys. But basically, they're images and they are uh, anchored here at these specific locations. We change the image to be a filled out circle when a character wins. That way we can determine how many wins they currently have. I only had three. What I've done is I've duplicated some of the other ones and then I've just changed the name. So instead of three, counter four and moved it over, counter five and moved it over. Uh, same with player two. I duplicated counter three for four and five and just moved them over to the correct spots. And then there you go. I've already have all of the round counters that I'll ever need. I never plan on having more than five rounds in this game. If you plan on having more than that, you can add more or you can make it dynamic and actually add them uh, depending on how many rounds they have. Like if you want players to be able to choose that fully, but it could get really complicated if you're letting that happen because if they choose like 17 rounds, then it has to be able to fit within this area. So that's a little outlandish. Most likely we're going to have at least some number that is the cap so i've made it five but add as many as you need and then we're going to do two things so we're going to make a new function that i've called determine number of round circles to display and then we're going to have to update our update round circles function to support these other uh, round circles that we've added so in our event graph in our event construct we have this game mode reference that we set up. And this is useful because we use the number of rounds to display what round it is that we've won and then show that on the screen. So for example, if a player has won one round, we change the corresponding player number. So player one's first icon to be filled out, meaning they have won a round. Well, there's something we can do here in construct right away 
to determine how many round circles show up. So not just changing the brush for when they win, but also changing the number of them that we can see by hiding ones that we don't need. Again, if we only need one round one, then we only need one round circle. The other ones probably shouldn't even show up. Okay, so with that, what I would like to do is make a function and call it right away an event construct. So you make a new function, pressing this button right here. I've called it determine number of round circles to display. And yes, it's a long name, but it's exactly what it sounds. It's going to determine how many round circles we need and then display the appropriate ones. Then I'm also going to add an input parameter by clicking new parameter. I want to make an integer and I'm just calling it num rounds. You can call it whatever you want. This is just a number that we need to display. Now, remember we made those changes and levels streamed in so that the HUD was created after the variables were set. So the variables are set here and the HUD is created after. That is because now, by the time this is made, the game mode is both valid and we can actually use the reference to grab the num rounds like this and pass that directly into this function upon construction. Okay, so do that and go ahead and call your function in event construct here. Once you've called it, we can go ahead and fill the function out. So go into the function and here's what mine looks like. All right, so the first thing we do in this function is we are going to use our input parameter and perform a switch on it. Switch on int. This is because what we're doing is we're using this variable to determine how many of these images we have to hide. So I go ahead and I add pin for 0 through 4. If you're using the 5 round circle or 5 rounds to win model like I am, then we only need 0 through 4. And then the default technically takes care of the fifth case and any other cases where we just display all five of them. But zero through four is where we may need to limit uh, the round counter. Okay. So this is actually super simple. We can call set visibility on all the round counters that we don't need. By default, uh, it, if you duplicated yours, these will be marked as variable. But when we set these up, we made sure these images were all variable. So you can see literally all of them are marked as a variable. This means that we can access them in our event graph. And so very simply, I've named them according to what round they relate to. So check this out. If our number of rounds to win is zero, which is a weird case, but you could use it for like infinite rounds or you could use it for practice mode or something if you wanted to like that but if the number of rounds required to win is zero then we can actually hide all of our round counters so basically what i've done is i've grabbed all of my round counter images get them and then i call set visibility now something cool you can do with certain nodes in a reel such as set visibility is you can actually pass in multiple targets it can take multiple references here so what you'll notice I've done is I've actually taken all of all of my round counters and passed them into the same node here. That way it will set them all to be hidden. See, it starts as visible. Make sure you mark it as hidden. So this will hide every single round counter. All right, let's go to a more practical example, such as one. One win is required to win this match. So I grab counters two through five for both player one and player two. You'll notice round counter one is not here for either player. This is because we want one round counter to be displayed and all of these are visible by default. So we're choosing which ones we wanna hide. If only one win is required, we wanna hide all of the other round counters other than the first one. So basically I copied this, this logic here, and I took out uh, P1 round counter one and P2 round counter one. From here, you can probably see how it how it goes. So it gets shorter every time. Now, say two wins are required. Well, we want to keep the round circles one and two visible for each player. So three, four, and five for each player had to be hidden. And if you look at this, three, four, and five, three, four, and five, they're all set to visibility hidden. If it's three rounds that are required to win to be one to win the match, 
then we have to hide round counters four and five, set them to be hidden. And if it's four rounds that have to be won to win the match, then we only have to hide round counter five for both players. Default is if we have five rounds or more, in which case it's we're not going to hide any of them, so I just didn't do anything. But you could technically like force them to be visible or do something so that you're aware, you know, so it's not just like empty here, if that looks confusing. But really nothing has to be done. It'll just do the default case, which is it doesn't hide any of them. They're all visible. Okay. And at that point, this should line up. And when you select an option in your settings menu, the number of round circles that appear should be dependent on that setting. There's actually one other thing we need to do that I haven't done. We're going to do this live just because it is um, a little annoying. But the update round circles, the way we set it up is we actually, every time a round goes off, so say we've won, the player has won uh, three rounds, it's going to go in to here and set all these circles to be the win round circle brush otherwise if they won two it says the last one to be you know default whatever well technically we don't have to do this for all of our cases because now we're hiding them but since we've already used this method i'm going to go ahead and just continue with it so what i'm going to do here is show you and copy it um, and we'll do it live so say the player has won zero rounds, we basically default all the brushes to be the standard round circle image. So we're going to go ahead and add this for the other two cases now. Okay. So what I do is I'm going to copy these guys. Um, whoops. I'll copy it twice like that. So you consider these round four and five. We have to change these variables. If we copy them, you can tell these are default round circle. So it doesn't actually matter. We don't, we don't have to change any of the details on the set brush. But we can change our P1 round counter three can become P1 round counter four for this guy. And the way you do this is if you drag off of this guy here and then use it on the left side of the node, it'll say change node to read P1 counter four. You can actually change the node that's there. You can also just get rid of it and then drag this one in, whatever's easier. Okay. And so technically we want to go through and do this for all of our logic, for all of our, our friends here. So I'm just going to copy these ones that I made, paste them down below, uh, try and line them up perfectly. But you can leave them. Okay. So if one round is one, four and five would still be empty. If two rounds are one then four and five would still be empty. So we can paste this same one again. Uh, that's not quite right. There we go. Make sure everything is how it's supposed to look. Okay. If three rounds are one, then we have all these ones filled out. Four and five would still be empty at that point. So we can copy this one more time, put that in there. However, things start to change on the fourth one here. So now we can copy this entire row. Whoops. Now we can copy this entire row. Let's try that again. And let's paste it down below. Okay. Paste it right there. Uh, it should be like another line down to keep it consistent. Something like that. We want to drag four into the reroute node here. So if four rounds are one, then round counter one, two, and three are going to be a win, but four is also going to be a win now. Okay, so what, what do we call it? We call it win round circle. All right, now five can remain round circle. So you can probably guess what we're going to do now, but we're going to literally copy and paste it one final time. And we're going to bring in the switch on five here. It's going to go down here. And we're going to make sure that uh, five is also win round circle because all five rounds have been won, so they should all be a golden circle. And now we have all of ours filled out for player one. Technically, you have to do the same for player two, so we can do it super quickly, uh, and you'll probably understand what's going on, but these are round two, or player two's round circles, so we just have to change these as well. P2 round counter four, okay? P2 round counter five, they're both gonna be regular round circle. 
Then we can copy these guys and paste them down below. They're still going to be regular. For, uh, I believe this is two wins now. Four and five would still not be filled out at this point. They would still be empty. And this is three wins. So four and five are still empty, but the others are officially filled in. All right. Then we're going to copy our entire row because at this point we have four rounds that are one. So when I have four rounds that are one, then number four has to be the win round circle. Five can be empty. And we can copy the entire row again. Put it in the right spot. Drag the line through. So five rounds are one. So both four and five now have to be win round circle. There we go. And now this will allow us to, no matter how many rounds we win, all of our possibilities, the round circles will light up properly and they will all correspond to the proper number of rounds that the character has won. All right, with that done, there's one last thing we need to do for our round time infinite. So let's get that sorted. So if the round time is infinite, I basically don't want the clock to tick down at all. Instead of letting it tick down to zero, and then we cap it and don't end the round, whatever. I just don't want the round time to tick down at all. I'll just leave it at 99 and it just won't move. Now we have the Boolean is timer active, but we set that true and false depending on certain states of the match. So between rounds and things, the timer does not reset unless it unless the round ended due to the round time running out. So because of that, we can't really rely on the is timer active Boolean for that. We need to use our new is round time infinite. Well, we scroll down, we have event tick and event BP tick that we set up in the series. We don't need a regular event tick anymore, by the way. We can uh, feel free to take that out if you want. I've just left it here to show I have nothing in it. We use our BP tick now because we have to have logic in our code tick. Anyway, in our BP tick, we were checking if the timer was active and we were putting it into this branch. If it is active, we were decreasing our round time. It was literally that simple. But now what I want to do is add an additional three nodes here before going into the branch. So is timer active and you want the and boolean, okay? Is timer active is the top one. Then we want to check is round time infinite, okay? And not boolean, okay? So if this is not true or if this is false, pass that into the second part of the and. So if the timer is active and the round is not supposed to be infinite time, then decrease round time. Because if round time is infinite, we just don't need to do any of this. So we just hit false on this branch and we just fail out and don't decrease the time ever. Okay, so you can actually see this in action. We go into our settings and we select infinite time. We can then go back into versus. I can skip our stage intros and you can see that the match starts. I take control of my character, all that good stuff, but my round time does not go down. It does not decrease. This is intended because we selected infinite time. So there you go. That's how we can use all of our settings that we've set up properly and finalized so far within our actual game and see these results live. So we can actually see what it is that we have to do um, as our actual objective, like we have to win this number of rounds, we have this much time to do it. And so that's pretty convenient. There's technically one other thing that we can do that I haven't done. And I'll show you what that is. So we have this uh, setting, all players in one device, keyboard mode, which I've enabled by default. Because what it is, is if the, uh, if the players are all playing on one device such as a keyboard we split the, the controls on the keyboard instead of using multiple controllers and we have that logic down depending on this boolean if we disable it it actually won't work right now because in the default game obp begin play i'm forcing it to be true well all you have to do is actually disable that if you disconnect that line then it will be dependent on the boolean you set here. See, it's actually set to uh, disabled by default because I don't force it to be true. So you can say enabled 
and then it will be enabled or you can leave it disabled and you can work on controllers however that's actually going to be auto detected in the future it'll be dependent on how many controllers are plugged in and different things like that so you don't really have to manually set that but if you'd like to play around with that now you can go ahead and do that and your players will be able to accurately set that variable and determine what their input devices are that's up to you for convenience sake i'm leaving it plugged in but just know that's exactly how you can make that setting work as well and that covers all of our settings that we have finalized and ready to show off so there you go, guys. That's how you can use them all in your game and have a basic settings menu completely functional. But after all that, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else. And I really, really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to all these guys, the Patreon members, the YouTube membership subscribers. Thank you all so much for your support for all the love, for encouraging me to keep working on this series. I love all these series, and I'm glad you guys are enjoying them as well. So thank you so much again, and I really, really appreciate everything you guys do. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to assist you, get you caught up, and get you fixed for any of the problems you ran into while watching this. That way you can be on your way and working on the game further. But anyway, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.